Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. Hey, we entered a new month this week. And I told you that the Spirit of God has said this is a month of prayer. And when he said the month of prayer, he's telling us about what he will be focusing on. Now, why prayer? Those are the things we'll be talking about. So we, we, I'm going to be teaching you on a subject we try to teach me to pray teach me to pray why because it's the work of the holy spirit to teach us and help us pray before going to today's broadcast can we make demand for our daily bread are you ready remember increase should be on your mind say father i demand from you my daily bread and i receive it lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, in, in Luke chapter 18, the Bible says, verse 1, it says, and, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. He said that men ought always always not sometimes not when there's trouble he says that men ought always so the whole purpose of this parable he, he he began to share with them is because of this to show them and to teach them why it's important that men ought always now when he says men he's not talking about the male species he's talking about people people ought always to pray and not to faint meaning the reason people faint is because they did not pray it's as simple as that. See, the reason people faint is because they don't pray. If you pray, you will not faint. Why? Now, when we talk about prayer, you know, most times people think the act of prayer itself. It, 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 I, you know, there are lots of people who participate in the act of prayer, and yet they don't pray. People can do series on prayer, and yet don't pray. It is those who pray that will understand what prayer is and they are the ones that will get the result of what they are praying about. Now the, 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 the Spirit of God is saying that He's releasing the unction to pray upon us. And that's His focus for this month, releasing the unction of prayer on us. Meaning he's going to be stirring up your heart to pray. Have that stirring started already. You're going to start feeling a strong urge to pray. I told you this before. Now when that urge comes, you must learn how to respond to it. Because it's still your will. You can choose to ignore it. You can choose not to respond no matter how it comes on you it's still your choice to respond or not to respond if you respond you see the benefit of it if you don't respond you see the bad side of it this is as simple not, not that god is going to punish you for not responding but you see for the holy ghost to come on you and say it's time to pray there is a reason he's doing that if you suddenly feel the strong urge to pray and you ignore it, and you ignore it, and you ignore it. The, the Lord, the Lord will never leave us with a witness. Sometimes those witnesses just kept quiet. There is nothing that is going to happen that the Lord will not leave a witness. Nothing. But many times, even you, when the Lord tells you things, you don't take them seriously. The problem is not the Lord informing you. The problem is the response you give to that information. That's where this problem always comes. Now, sometimes you, you just feel it. You know, you say, I had a strong notion. You know, you talk like that. I had a strong notion. Or, I don't know. It just Something just keeps coming to my mind. Now, when that thing keeps coming to your mind, what did you do? 
Now, the reason you'll still be saying something keeps coming to my mind is simply because you've not learned how to fellowship in truth with the Holy Ghost. So you don't even know when the Holy Ghost is prompting you to do things. Now, the Holy Ghost functions in different ways in us. We hear his voice, okay? Um, or sometimes he he makes us perceive. So sometimes like, ah, I perceive this thing is going to happen. Now, you use the word perceive because you have not heard a voice telling you that this was going to happen. But then, now, the, how does perception work? Perception works by him narrowing your mind, narrowing your eyesight to a particular thing or particular direction. So anytime you look at this thing, you sort of can see the end. See? There are times people are talking, you're talking to some people, maybe they want to take a decision concerning something. And then you look at it, you can see the end, you can see trouble at the end. Sometimes you don't even see an end. I never go on any trip until I see the end of that trip. Now, not, not because I'm scared or anything. No. It's a pattern I have learned and grown with the Lord in. If I want to undertake any trip, days before that trip, I'll see the end of that trip. There are times I've, I've, I've you know, wait now, see sometimes because you're under authority. You see, you, you must learn to, because a lot of people have died like that. A lot of pastors have died. Yes, I'm aware. And, and if we don't learn from all these things, if we don't learn from other people, then your own life will become an experiment. And you don't want that. You want to be able to leverage on other people's experiences. So when you hear stories, what do you learn from it? When, when you hear testimonies, what do you learn from it? So when you are under authority, for example, you must learn how to be under authority and yet be in authority you see it, it's a mystery of life you have to learn and do it well you are under authority meaning officially you have a hierarchy that you report to okay but then you don't and and, and and then you know you know for example married married people okay you're a married woman you're under authority over your husband whether you like it or not it doesn't matter who you think you are you are under authority and god respects and honors that authority If you undermine that authority for whatever reason that you may have, God will deal with you. See, sometimes people don't realize that there are situations where God, see, God have already set things in motion. And then I always tell people this, you have the accuser that is there. There is an accuser that is there. You remember the story of Joshua in the book of Zechariah. Joshua stood before the Lord. But the Lord confessed that he was wearing, he was putting on a filthy garment. And he said, because he was putting on a filthy garment, God couldn't do what do with him what he wanted to do with him. Not because God saw the filthy garment and said, I, when if I would deal with it, no. But you see, as long as that filthy garment was on him, Satan was there with his accusation against him. What gave Satan the boldness to accuse him? It was because of the filthy garment he was wearing. And you see, when Satan brings an accusation against you, there is no, not much God can do to block that accusation. The only thing God can do is to show you a pathway to mercy. Yes. You remember David when, when he sinned against God by numbering the people, okay? And then the prophet came to him and said, David, you've done something wrong and God is not pleased with you. Say, ah, what did I do? He said, this is what you did. He said, whoa. And then he said, God gave him three options. Choose one of these three options. And David figured out that, look, when God sends you a message, you better choose one. And then he looked at all the options. He chose the one that would be him and God. See, 
because one of it said, well, I'll let your my your enemies rule over you. Say no, no, yeah, man. By the time they finish that room, may not survive it, you know. And then one of it says, I would bring a plague on you. And then look at if God is the one bringing a plague on me, it's easier now. I can cry for mercy, and and He will hear my my cry and take the plague away. Do you understand? But if He puts me under the hand of a man, even when I cry for mercy, what if the man does not listen to God anymore? Now, these are things David considered. And David said, look, it's better to fall into the hands of the Lord. I'll choose the one of the plague. Now, he had committed a blunder. And that blunder brought, uh, attracted judgment from the Lord. Why would he attract judgment from the Lord? Because God had given strict instructions concerning that. Now, so he didn't rush to say, oh God, have mercy, oh God, have mercy. He said, no, you have broken this and this is the consequence of it. So, the plague started. You know the story. And in one day or so, thousands of people died. I think about 70,000 people died. And David went before the Lord. He said, oh God, I'm the one that sinned. Why are you killing these people? Sometimes you better think of the consequences of your action before you do them. Because sometimes the consequences of your action doesn't even come to you. It comes to other people that are close to you or other people you care about. So David went before the Lord and said, Lord, it is me that sinned. Why are you punishing these people? Why don't you deal with me directly? Now, that was his way of repenting before the Lord. That was his way of seeking God's mercy, okay? Now, because he's wondering, the killing is not me. The killing is not coming to me. It's coming to innocent people. <laughs> Easy. So he ran before the Lord. He said, Lord, show me mercy. Show me mercy. Then the wisdom of God was given him. Now, the plague was still on. People were dying. Yet the wisdom of God came to him. I want you to understand something about God. Why didn't God just stop the plague? But watch. The wisdom of God came to David as go to a place where the plague had not reached and offer God a sacrifice in that place. He said, okay, so they studied the map. They saw that the threshing floor of Arauna is, is the plague hasn't reached there. So David said, get me there as fast as you can. And then he got there. So Arauna, I said, oh, sir, what are you? you no, know, I like we say, what do we owe this special visit? He said, look, it's not a special visit. I need your threshing floor. I need things for sacrifice. I want to offer sacrifice to the Lord. And Arana said, okay, no problem. He, he gathered everything and, and brought to him. And David said, how much? He said, ah, king, no. Why should I charge? He said, please stop that joke. How much? He said, king, I cannot charge you. And David said, look, sir. Tell me the price of it. I need to pay you because I cannot offer unto God that which cost me nothing. Now, you know that song, you know, sang it many times. I will not offer anything that cost me nothing. I laid before you nothingness. Now, we, 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 even when we sing that song, we don't understand the transaction David had with the Lord when he made that statement. Now, we, we sing that song or we preach that kind of message to inspire people to give something big. Give God that which cost you something. But that was not the understanding David was communicating. What David was simply saying is, I cannot offer to God an, a sacrifice that is not my own. That's what he said. Because Aaron said, no, king, take it free of charge. Take everything. Your king said, no, no. Why? What, this, this was David's mind. I sinned against God. I must pay the price for that atonement to come, on, to come over me. I must pay the price. So you now giving me the things for the sacrifice and then I go to offer the sacrifice. Uh -uh. It, it's not strong enough. And that was the meaning of that. David meant I must pay for it so that it become true and true, my sacrifice. That was the mentality of David. And the moment he went there and offered the sacrifice, the Bible said the angel stopped. The 
angels thought. Now, what was that? That was the wisdom of God that was given to David, even in the midst of judgment. Isn't it amazing? God is judging you. God is giving you wisdom on how to deliver yourself from the judgment. See, <laughs> you understand? Now, 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 you see, people don't get this. I, I remember a few months ago, I was sharing with you about the Godhead. So I, I told you the role the Father plays, the role the Word of God plays, the role the Spirit of God plays. The Spirit of God is us. Now when the Bible says we have an advocate with the Father, literally he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Now, he is called the Spirit of Christ. Now, before now, you never heard him referred to as Christ. But he, is a, he has always been Christ. Okay? Now, he was there when God did everything, so he knows every secret. And when even when God's, a child of God is being punished for his actions, the Holy Ghost can give him wisdom on how to attract God's mercy in that situation and be delivered. You know, last month I was talking about mercy. As I said, the earth is full of God's mercy. Don't perish. Don't perish. The earth is full of God's mercy. When you, when you allow the Holy Spirit to help you, especially in, time, in, in the place of prayer, now, now you, see, you submit yourself to Him. Say, Lord, I need your help. I need your help. When you ask for that help and believe Him, See, the, there is a walk. I'm going to be teaching a lot this month concerning prayer and, and the move of God's Spirit. Trust in the Holy Spirit for help, truly. Because if He doesn't help you understand these things, there is nothing anybody can do for you. There is a move of God that is flowing right now over God's children. And that move is stirring up why God said this is a month of prayer is because in the place of pray prayer, he wants to bring out the hidden mysteries. There, Listen, there are, there are Aikobara Tishata. The ministry of the teachers will be paramount in this season. The ministry of teachers will be paramount in this season. Why? Because you see, Lots of prophecies have gone forth and people are still struggling to understand them. The, the, the teaching ministry brings the understanding of God's mind, what has been said, even what is being said today. The teaching ministry expounds that to God's children so they understand it and they can relate with it. Even, and, and, and that teaching ministry is not from the senses, it's judging spiritual things with spiritual things so you will see a rise of true teachers from god there's going to be a rise now people who truly now not just you see people who truly know and understand god it's not people who are still doing share and error People who have walked with the Lord, who have tested him, and they understand him. They are the people God is going to be pushing out. You know, he's going to be trusting them. You know, Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would force out laborers into the harvest field. These ones I'm talking about, they are the kind of laborers that will be trust that God is going to be pushing out now. And I pray that, that you would, if God have called you to be so, there, there, are, there, are, there are people who carry the call of God, but God hasn't so, said to them, go yet. And they've been waiting and waiting and waiting on the Lord. 
But the season, I hear the Lord say, the season has come for their manifestation. The season of their priesthood has come. There are different kinds of priesthood and, and every priesthood has a season. So I hear the Lord say there's a new season of priesthood. There's a, there are new sets of priests that you begin to see. And their job, mostly you'll find out that they are teaching priests. Priests who will teach the depth of God's heart and the depth of God's truth and men will understand. That's what's going on in this season. And I pray if God have called you to this, I pray your heart will be willing and ready. And, and, and you that is receiving the ministry, I pray your heart will be ready to hear and to learn. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we believe in the work that you are doing right now. We trust in your ability to make it good. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have the best weekend ever. Bye.